Hello, how are you doing? Have you ever enjoyed stories about time travel, especially when you were younger? Because when I was a child, I was obsessed by H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, and I think I loved it not only because it imagines this fantastic scenario where a person can travel through different periods of time, but it also poignantly describes how our civilization is constantly striving towards utopian ideals and inevitably failing. So I thought it was really interesting how in the novel Time Shelter by Georgi Gospodinov, uh, translated by Angela Rodell, uh, it's written, there is no time machine except the human being. However, the narrator befriends a mysterious individual uh, named Gostine who seemingly inhabits different periods of time simultaneously. The story introduces a scenario where individuals stricken with dementia find comfort in Gostine's clinic, which meticulously reproduces environments from different eras of history. As the idea catches on, the general public takes refuge in living as if the past were present, and eventually most of Europe holds referendums in order to revert back to a specific decade from history. Alongside this outlandish tale, this book ponders matters to do with mortality, memory, the nature of reality, and the power of nostalgia. As the narrator gets involved in the clinic and recreating the past, he's struck by certain sensations which trigger his own memories and start his own journey down memory lane. And I thought it was really moving in reading this novel how even though these recollections are obviously specific to him, I felt equally swept into this longing for the past. I feel like nostalgia is something that so many people experienced much more intensely during the pandemic because lockdowns meant that we weren't able to see the, the people and places that we were familiar with. And I know for me, um, I was triggered off at one point, and this is kind of shameful to admit, but I uh, traveled up to um, this grocery store near King's Cross, um, which is quite large, and there's this big fountain um, out in this area in London near King's Cross and just the, um, the the smells of this chlorinated recycled water um, just triggered these memories in me um, when I was a child and I was taken to Disney World and all of the elaborate fountains that were there and so this like set me off on this journey like when I went back home I went on this whole um, trip in, in YouTube of, of watching these point of view videos uh, going on different rides and um, old vlogs um, going to the Magic Kingdom. I mean, did anybody else go on a big nostalgia trip during lockdown? I hope I'm not the only one. There's an undeniable power to how certain sensations, especially smells, can instantly transport us back to the past, and that's really vividly described in this novel. Even if it's not a happy record, collection, we can suddenly feel like we're re-experiencing all of these emotions from a bygone era using this mixture of memory and the imagination. The novel describes both the pleasures and dangers of harnessing this effect in individuals and nations. Gostin's ambition grows from wanting to recreate different decades on different floors of his clinic to wanting to recreate whole cities um, from different periods of time. And similarly, as nations engage in public debates about what decade they want their country to revert back to, uh, there are disagreements and issues which make this practically impossible. And of course, this is an absurdist story, so it's not about the practicalities of making this actually happen, but indulging in this 
concept in order to give us a more clear-sighted view about the influence that history and nostalgia has upon us. Gospodinov artfully shows how it's easier and more comfortable for people to hearken back to the past rather than look to the future, which is always unknown. This is something that politicians and marketers are very aware of, and they use this to manipulate the public, and we can see this in both political campaigns and in commercials. And frequently, it works. Ironically, we can even feel nostalgia for the ads which we were constantly fed early in our life, and I like how he writes at one point, but what is going on with the ads? The ones we passed over with annoyance back then have now taken on a new value. Suddenly, the ads have become the true news about that time, the entrance into it, a memory of everyday life. These ads from the past have become testaments to the ideals and styles which were fed to us at a particular period of time. In recent years, populist leaders have proclaimed that they want to make a country great again and take a country back. By taking such notions of reverting back to past times literally, this novel creatively shows how this isn't only a fallacy, but a dangerous impossibility. Iniquity has always existed, so no one would be able to agree on which period of time would be the best in a nation's history. Also, this nostalgia for a purer, better era is more about our fantasies about the ways things used to be, rather than the reality of history. Gospodinov uh, states that the past is not just that which happened to you, sometimes it is that which you just imagined. Alongside making universal statements about the past and memory, it feels like this novel is also making a timely statement because we can so often be swayed into making decisions about the future based on nostalgia rather than recognizing the reality of the present. But I have to say, as much as I appreciated the overall message of this novel, there were some elements of the book that I struggled with. It has so many interesting ideas to chew over, and it really helped me reframe my understanding of history and the effects of nostalgia. However, I felt like it was a bit of a slog getting through this story, and I couldn't emotionally connect with it at certain points. I think that's partly because uh, this nebulous figure of Gostin kind of flits in and out of the story, making statements and providing quotes in a way that felt a bit too self-conscious. Also, even though the narrator gradually reveals elements of his life, I never feel like I could fully grasp who he was as a character. He also sometimes goes off on tangents, which really put me off from him, uh, such as one chapter, which seems like a one-sided polemic uh, against euthanasia, and then in another section he seems to dismiss all of recent literature uh, when he writes, if nations go back to the 70s and 80s, what will happen to the poetry and books that are not yet written and which are forthcoming? Then I tried to recall what great things I had read from the past few years. I didn't think I would have regrets about any of it. In my opinion, these sassy, simplistic asides detract from the overall meaning of the book. However, I love the fact that he works in the term lumber sexual at one point. So while I admire the larger meaning of this novel, I felt the actual experience of reading it was both enlightening and frustrating. Now, I read this because it's been long listed for the International Booker Prize, and I'm slowly making my way through all of the nominated books, and this is a really hotly tipped uh, like contender for the prize to be shortlisted, if not to actually win the award this year, and it's really interesting going to the Booker Prize website and reading all of the judges' uh, descriptions of the books and why that they think that they're so interesting. So I'll put a link to this below um, if you want to have a look through yourself, but I'm going to read through um, what they said about Time Shelter. 
Uh, so they call it a wide-ranging, thought-provoking, macabre, and humorous novel about nationality, identity, and aging, and about the healing and destructive power of memory. It asks the question, what is our place in 20th century history when that history seems to be constantly shifting? Nostalgia isn't what it used to be, they say, and this book shows us in moving, funny, and disturbing ways how and why. And yeah, I think that's a real apt way to describe and characterize this book. There are also interviews with all of the authors and translators on the Booker Prize website, so I'll put a link to that below. And I thought it was really interesting uh, reading through the interview with Gospodinov, um, how he describes how he felt um, leaders in Western countries had been describing uh, and trying to invoke this sense of like a bright past in order to gain favor with the, the public. And uh, growing up in under communism, um, he describes how that was a system which was constantly looking towards a bright future. So in this novel, he wanted to, to analyze um, the meaning of these different things and how we're sort of caught in this, this present. Also, he describes the challenges of how can nationalist kitsch be translated for different countries in the novel. And he makes this really interesting statement uh, where he says, we write to postpone the end of the world, which I think he means literature is a way of better understanding and thus better preserving our reality and our present times, uh, but also achieving this sense of immortality. It's also poignant how he describes how influenced he was by stories that his grandmother told him when he was younger, which were these blends of reality and fantasy, uh, but also how influenced he was by writers like Thomas Mann and Borges, um, whose influence can definitely be felt in this book. It's also really interesting reading the interview with uh, translator Angela Rodell, um, who describes how she's also mainly a musician and that she began translating this novel before it was actually completed. Um, so she had translated an excerpt from it um, when he had just started writing it uh, for agents and, and others. She also describes the challenges of translating this novel and how there was a confusion about how um, some eras are labeled as different things in this book, um, which she had a different sense of and she had discussions with the, the author about it and they realized that different cultural eras um, happened in different countries at different times. And of course, this is something true that influences happen around the, the world and affect different parts of the world at different times. And that's really conveyed within the novel as well. She also mentions that Georgi and uh, the author Olga Tokorczyk um, have been friends for many years. So it's not that surprising um, that she provided an endorsement for this novel. I feel like uh, both writers are dealing with a lot of similar ideas and, and concepts and have um, really interesting ways of approaching that in their fiction. Now I'd love to know if you've also read this book and what you think about it, uh, if you agree with me or if you disagree with me, or if you're interested in reading it now, uh, please let me know about that in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. But uh, yeah, it's a really unique experience uh, reading this. I I've never read anything by this author before. Um, a few other of his books have been translated into English, so it would be interesting to explore those at some point. Uh, but thank you for watching me discuss this book. I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.